Hello, Keith Rucker here at VengeMachining.org. Guys, today uh, we're going to be working back on the Stoker engine restoration. And just a quick reminder, I know I've mentioned this pretty much in all my videos, but you never know who's catching on here. This little engine is a steam engine that goes in a mainline steam locomotive that is being restored by Nashville Steam up in Nashville, Tennessee. And the engine that we have here, the little steam engine, is a Stoker engine. The Stoker engine fits up in the tender of the locomotive and powers an auger that moves the coal from the tender up into the boiler. This is basically a modern fireman. It is what moves that coal instead of having to shovel it by hand, they had a mechanical way of doing it. And uh, we've been tasked with restoring this little stoker engine for that project. Today, what we're going to be working on is trying to remove uh, the valves, sleeves. There's uh, cast iron sleeves that are going up inside of these uh, holes here where the valves are. And uh, they are severely pitted and in need of replacement and we need to get them out. It's going to be a challenging project. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it once we get started. Uh, and we're going to be out at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture today doing this work. Uh, I just, I don't have a hydraulic press big enough here in my shop, so we're going to be out there using uh, the press uh, that they've got at the museum uh, to work on getting this thing out. So with that, let's head out to the museum and let's get started. I apologize, the lighting is not very good out here at the museum, um, but I think you can kind of see what's going on. Of course, these are the cylinders that the pistons move up and down in. These are the valves, uh, the cylinders that the valves go in. And if you look, you can see this little ring uh, around that. And what that is, is that is a cast iron sleeve that is pressed down into this casting. The goal for today is to get these out. Now, this is gonna be a little bit challenging. Normally with uh, sleeves like this, it's pretty common to have have uh, cylinder sleeves uh, in diesel engines and what have you. Very similar thing to what we got here. Uh, but what's going to make this job challenging is, is that they're open on this end. This is what I'm going to call the bottom. This is actually the, the front face of the of the locomotive or, or of the engine. Uh, on the back side, there's only a small hole in the middle that a that a valve rod goes through. And because of that, we really can't get anything behind this to press it out uh, like you would normally do. And I can't go out the other direction because it won't allow me. There's a, there, again, there's a casting that blocks that. I got a smaller hole in there. So we're gonna have to press them from the other side coming out this way. Here's hopefully a better view of these sleeves that we're talking about. Uh, got a little bit of light over here where maybe you can see what's going on. But again, you can see that ring around here, that's the cast iron sleeve. Let's press down in here. And uh, the sleeve you can see is ported. There's holes in there that allows the steam to come into the different parts. Uh, and the valve moves back and forth and moves that steam from the uh, steam supply to the cylinders to, um, to actually move the pistons along. So my game plan is that since I cannot really put a plug on the whole back and press this, I'm gonna to try to use these little uh, ports in here to grip it. And what I did was I had my buddy of mine cut out a little piece on his plasma cam. And this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take this, we're gonna fit that up inside of that hole on this side, fit it inside of that hole on that side, and hopefully I'll have enough to catch those two points and I can take that uh, a push rod from the other side. I got a little hole here where I can put a little screw in there to kind of keep it in on, on center. I'll flip this over and we'll press it out the bottom. That's the game plan. Uh, we're going to see how it works. I don't know how difficult these things are going to be to press out. Uh, I don't know how tough they're going to be to get in there. We may have to heat the casting up. Uh, we may have to shrink the cylinders or the, the sleeves to get them out. Um, I don't know. We're just going to have to play it by ear and see what happens. So uh, come along for the ride. So here's my push tool. I just got a piece of round rod. I drilled and tapped a hole in the bottom that I can put that on. I'll have to feed this rod down through. You can see this is the side we'll be pressing from, and we don't have that full opening like I was talking about, but we can get down through there, and uh, hopefully that'll grab that little insert and push it right out. That's the game plan. Let me get this thing set up to start pressing. I've got that little uh, spacer piece down there in the bottom that we're gonna press on. I got my rod here, we got our hydraulic jack in here. And uh, I'm just gonna start by hand pressing this and see what happens. So far, 
We have it moved. All right, what's given here? Well, boys and girls, um, looks like we might have to go to plan B here. Uh, I put a picture up at the bottom, but it looks like what happened is, is it just cracked right around the bottom. It's pushing the bottom part of that insert out very nice, uh, but it's not coming out the top. So yeah, let me, uh, let me do some thinking on this and come up with a, another plan on how we're gonna, how we're gonna get these things out. Thought I'd give you a quick shot here. The Vulcan steam locomotive going by. This is a 1917 Vulcan Ironworks uh, 040 locomotive that we run out here at the Georgia Museum of Agriculture. I get a chance to work on that a lot as well as uh, engineer it from time to time. But uh, as it was going by, I thought I'd put a little clip in there. So here you can see what we got. Uh, like I said, it's pressing that little bottom little bit out nice once it got to moving, but it just fractured all the way around that piece of brittle cast iron. Uh, it was a good plan, but it wasn't good enough. All right, um, I'm gonna probably load this thing back up, take it back home, and we gotta come up with another plan. So um, uh, we'll bring you back once we come up with that. All right, plan B. I'm using the same piece that I had before, but I actually found a slot that's up at the top side of this. And after some finagling around and fishing around there, I was able to get my little pushing insert into those slots. Uh, so hopefully pushing from closer to the top going down, um, we can get this to come on out. So that's the hope. Let's see what happens. appears to be going down. <laughs> I see what's going on here. Well, I thought that this thing was moving down and pushing the piece down, but in, in reality, when it was moving, what was happening is it was bending these little tabs. And as you can see, we had a catastrophic failure uh, on this one. I've got another one of these little tabs made, so we're gonna put that one in there and uh, continue trying to get this thing out. All right, we're on plan C. I've got the torch out. What I'm doing here is I'm heating up the inside of that cylinder. Uh, trying to get some heat in there to get into this casting. With the heat, it should uh, make this, that bore actually expand a little bit oversized. But it's also gonna make that sleeve expand as well. So the plan is, is after we get this good and hot, I'm gonna come in here with compressed air, squirt compressed air down the inside of this. That will hopefully cool the sleeve, which will shrink it, and then press it out. We're going to see how it works. Well, that's getting pretty warm. All right, now we're going to cool that inside. I think it's going. I think it's going. I think it's going. Use a 
in the air over hydraulics here. Basically just putting air pressure onto my hydraulic jack so I don't have to hand crank it, but it looks like it's pressing the sleeve out. <laughs> We're about, it's like about a third of the way out. And uh, there's that broken piece off the bottom. I'm gonna have to do some resetting here. We're about maximum stroke of our jack, but I think we got this one loose. I'm excited. All right, let's try it again. All right, looks like it's going. Got our sleeve out, not necessarily in one piece, but that's all right. We're gonna have to remake it anyway. Awesome. One down, one to go. I got it reset again. Ah. All right. Well, guys. I had two of these little pieces made and uh, you can see what we've done to both of them here. So uh, we've still got the second sleeve to get out and I'm gonna have to get some more of these made before I can do anything else. Well, I'm back in my shop. I thought I'd kind of just uh, sum up what we accomplished here and what we still need to do. So I thought you'd like to take a look at the sleeve a little bit closer up. This is a, uh, after doing uh actually when it came out guys i'll admit it was in had three pieces or a piece broke off the, the bottom and a piece that broke off the top um, i went over and just used some epoxy and put it back together this is not for anything other than i've got to remake this part and uh, i wanted to see it in one piece so when i start drawing it up and figuring out how to do this uh, i have something to go off of uh, both of these sleeves they're, they're actually mirror images of one another. So uh, there's two of them I'll have to make, but they're a little bit different. This material is made out of cast iron. I think I may have mentioned that before. And uh, my plan is, is I'm gonna make a pattern and have this cast and then I'll have to machine it. So I don't have to make it out of a piece of solid cast iron. Also, uh, when I make my pattern, we've got all this porting in here. And instead of having to machine that out, probably going to use cores in the pattern, which is the way it would have been done originally uh, to get all these uh, ports in here. That's my plan. That may change. Uh, you know, alternatively, I could just machine all the holes in here, uh, but I don't know. We'll see. I got to do some figuring on how I'm going to make that pattern. Um, ideally, I'll just draw it up in, uh, in CAD and 3D print it, uh, and we'll send it to the foundry and have it have it cast and then uh, and then machine it, uh, which is, sounds a lot easier than it is. Um, here's the, the cylinder head, and you can see where this one came out of. The other one's still in place. And um, the good news is, is that where the, the mating surfaces in here, they're in pristine condition, the, the surfaces are. So uh, I should be able to easily get another one and put it back in here without too much trouble. Uh, worst case scenario is, uh, is if they're not perfectly round or something like that, I set this up on the mill and we rebore these just, you know, a few thou oversized to make sure they're just perfectly round. But I haven't gotten in there and tried to measure them. More than likely they're fine just like they are. I uh, won't have to do anything else. Still have to work on a plan. I guess we're up to D now on uh, getting out this sleeve. And But now that I've got this sleeve out and can really see what I'm dealing with a lot better, 
uh, you know, before I'm pretty much looking through this at this hole down here, and it's hard to see what's going on up in the top end. Now that I got this out, I think I've I've got in my mind a, a, a pressing fixture that I think I can feed in from the bottom, expand it out in the top, and be able to do a better job than what we did on this last one with a little little uh, tab uh, thing that I designed. So I'm going to play around with that, and then uh, we'll go back out and give it another shot. Probably do the same uh, treatment there where we heat it up, shrink that uh, inner sleeve, and then uh, try to pull it out. I've had some people comment, hey, you could uh, weld it on the inside. That might sh uh, shrink it up, and that's definitely an option, but it's just hard to work in this hole is that deep uh, with a welder um, and all the porting and stuff in there. I don't know. I'm a little bit nervous about doing that, but I, uh, I think that just shrinking it with the air will probably work fine. Uh, if nothing else, I've got some uh, compressed CO2 uh, in a cylinder, and uh, that's going to be much colder than just the compressed air. So that's another option that I have is when I heat it up, I can shrink it with that, and uh, that might work as well. So anyway, I um, thought you guys might enjoy seeing that. Uh, um, partial success. This was yesterday. I uh, got one of them out. I actually feel good about it. I knew this was going to be a big challenge and um, I'm not defeated uh, I, and I'm confident that we can get it out. Worst case scenario guys, uh, if I can't get it out, uh, we just bore it out. I can set this up over on my Miller machine and uh, we can go down there with a boring bar and bore that previous uh, sleeve out and, um, and we're, we're, we're fine. But I really wanted to get the sleeves out so that I can uh, have something to go off of to make the new ones. And oh, one other, one other comment that I got off of, uh, it was Facebook or Instagram, one where I posted some pictures of this. It says, why am I replacing them? I think I mentioned this before. The valve seats in here where the, the, the valve rides back and forth is severely pitted and really pitted beyond repair. By the time I bored it out to got it, get it cleaned up, I'm gonna be way oversized on the specs for this. The specs on this, um, surface in here is much tighter than the specs on the cylinder bores. So I really just don't have an option other than to replace these. Guys, that's going to be a wrap on this video. As always, thanks for watching. Comments are appreciated and I'm sure you guys are going to have plenty of comments on this video. And uh, with that, Catch us on the next one. We'll, uh, we'll finish getting this job done and continue working on the Stoker engine. We're constantly making progress toward getting it where we can start reassembling this thing. That'll be it, guys. We'll talk to you next time.